Today I'm going to be doing a demonstration where I'm painting roses over Liquitex pouring medium. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. If you've not already seen it, I do have my initial review along with showing you how I'm mixing and using the pouring medium. I will have that card pop up here so you can check out that video. But for today's project, I'm working a lot bigger. I used Liquitex soft body acrylics for my background, the phthalo blue, phthalo green, unbleached titanium white, and then the pouring medium for the background. And then I'm using Liquitex heavy body paints along with the Liquitex glazing medium for painting the roses themselves. Typically, you'll see me use Liquitex Basics, but mixed with the glazing medium, I kind of like the heavy body better just because they seem to have a bit more pigment, so they worked really well with that glazing medium. I'm working on a Frederick's Convexo canvas. This has the beveled edges, so the paint goes all the way to the edges, does not need to be framed, looks beautiful hung. I love these canvases. By the way, this is not in any way a sponsored video. I'm just sharing what I love. If you're supporters over on Patreon, the one hour version of this tutorial is available for you now, complete with voiceover, so make sure to head over and check that out. Now we will move on to this tutorial. For some reason when starting this, my brain absolutely shut down and I scooped a ton of my soft bodied acrylic paints into the bowl and then poured pouring medium on top of that. What ended up happening is I had a mixture that just had too much paint and not enough pouring medium. So I used it anyway. I tried to thin it out with some of the pouring medium, but because I had so much paint, I don't know what I was thinking and why my brain shut down at that point, but my end result was not nearly as glossy as my first time doing this. And if you've not seen it, I will have a card pop up. You can check out and see exactly how I poured this and mixed it in the first my first attempt. So for this attempt, my mixture is much much, much thicker and I'm having to use the palette knife a lot more to smudge things around because the pouring medium wasn't really, I didn't have enough of it on there that it was allowing the colors to bleed into each other quite how I wanted. I actually didn't like the results that I got in using more paint this time. So in the future, I will always start with my pouring medium in the bowl and add a little bit of paint because a little bit of the soft bodied paints really does go a long way being that it is so highly pigmented. But even you can see the edge up against the white canvas there. It's not really pooling around. It's not spilling much, not nearly as much as it did last time. Now, either way, I would end up using the palette knife. I did the last time too. But this time I really depended on it to spread this around because my mixture was just too thick from using too much paint. So lesson learned. Didn't like how it looked. After it dried, I went ahead and put a coat over this, which I don't have in the video, video but I put another coat on top of it with more pour, pouring medium and much, much less of the paint. So I definitely wasted a lot of paint on this first coat, but you know what? I learned a good lesson. I now know what happens if I use more paint than pouring medium. And for me, I didn't like it. And it's not something where it's wrong. You can use however much you want. It's a matter of what you want your end result to be. For me, I like that super, super glossy look. I felt that it had a lot more depth. You can see I'm pouring a little bit more color and spreading that around there. But if you prefer something that's not quite as glossy, then you might want more paint and less medium like what I have on this painting. In order to not make it a huge mess, I do have my canvas set up on some of my little disposable cups so that it's not right up against the trash bag because if it was touching the trash bag, it's going to stick to the trash bag as it dries. So this is lifted up quite a bit. I also found that this seemed to take a lot longer to dry to the touch than the first attempt I did where I used more pouring medium. I had so much paint on here, it just felt like it took hours and hours before I was even able to move this out of the kitchen. It was not in a very convenient location. Just spreading that around again with the palette knife and I made sure to get the edges all the way painted because that, this isn't just going to evenly pour over the edges. You have to kind of guide it to make sure that you've got the full color coverage that you want. Another option would be to first paint those edges and then put the pouring medium over it. That way you don't have any of the white canvas showing through. I'm mixing the unbleached titanium white with some more of that pouring medium and letting it just drip onto the canvas. Just kind of bleeds out a little bit, not as much as it would if I had used more pouring medium, but it does give kind of a cool effect. And then I just smudged that around a bit more with palette knife. So I let this set for a week or two, and then I went over it again with more pouring medium and less paint the second time. So I ended up with the really glossy look that I wanted. Once that was done and completely dry, you have to let it dry for three days before you paint over it. I took titanium white and my glazing medium, and I painted a base layer for all of my roses. Just a solid, solid white. And this is gonna move real through really quickly because I did a terrible job, and I'm gonna sand this off anyway. So anyway, I covered everything with this solid base white. That 
that way I covered up my background and you're able to see all of the details that I want on the roses themselves. Once I got that white in there, I just freehanded, I took a paintbrush and freehanded in the general lines of where I wanted my roses. Now, one problem that I had, I'm working with the heavy bodied paints, the Liquitex heavy body and the Liquitex glazing medium. And this was just so thick. My paint was coming out gloppy. I started rushing. I wasn't really paying attention to the shapes of my flowers. Got sick of it, so I sanded it down. I let it dry, sanded it down, and painted them again. And I actually painted those the second time through off camera so I could get a bit more practice and really understand what I was doing before I continued recording. So the rest of this is recorded. Moving on to these ones, I found that it was best if I started with a nice base orange layer and then built up with my shadows and then my highlights. And this is a layering process. I'm going for a more painterly look. I want my brush strokes to show. So I do have a lot of paint on the brush. Originally, I was going to go for a more photorealistic look on these roses, and then it clicked when I was fr fighting with those first few roses that I ended up sanding down. Why am I fighting this? This medium, these Liquitex heavy bodied combined with the pouring medium, they just work really well for a very painterly style. They lend themselves very well to nice, smooth, heavy brush strokes, and so that's really what I'm going for more here now. And that's not to say that you can't get photorealistic with these. It's just that it seemed like they're made for this looser brushstroke. I just love this paint for this style. So I went ahead and changed, and that's what you're seeing me create here. I'm defining the petals. I do want you to be able to tell where each of the rose petals are. I'm not just putting random lines everywhere. This is not an impressionistic painting. I do want defined petals, just not as defined as I would do on a photorealistic piece. You see the brushstrokes here. This is one of those. It looks much more realistic from a distance. And I'm depending on my color and my values here much, much more so than I would on a more realistic or a photorealistic piece. When I work with photorealism, I've got the detail to make things look realistic, you know, the really fine, smooth detail. With this, I'm using these looser brush strokes, so I'm depending on my lighting to my lights and my shadows to get that realistic look. For these roses, I decided to go ahead and try lining them first before I painted the orange, just because I'm experimenting. I like to find out what's going to happen if I do something differently. Will I like it better? Will I not like it as much? And that's what I was doing here. I ended up deciding that I did like doing a base of orange before all of this shading, uh, but you can get there any either way. It's not like one way's wrong, one way's right. It's just going to be personal preference. There are 20 different ways to get to the same end. So here it was just experimenting which way did I like better? And I do like the orange first and then the detail on top. It just seemed to go a little bit faster for me. But I've now glazed the orange over everything, let it dry, and the orange is very translucent. So it didn't, I was able to see all of the detail I previously had painted on there. Then I came on top with some highlights. I'm using a lot of unbleached titanium white, and now I'm adding some shadows. Now these shadows are coming out muddier than what I want. I'm using the teal and turquoise color because I do want to pull some of those background colors into my work. The problem is those are very, very translucent. So it's great for creating shadows, but it's a lot muddier than I want. And what was happening is I'm not getting that orange orange glow coming from the center of the rose like I want. What I ended up having to do is mix a grayish violet color and put that down first. I ended up covering up the majority of the turquoise or the teal colors and then there's that violet color, the violet gray. Once that's on there, I can come back through with the teals and oranges, but the, or teals and turquoise colors. But this is going to allow that orange, that violet color being, or gray violet being up against the orange makes that orange look like it's glowing. I didn't have to change the color of the orange. That wasn't my problem. My problem was what color was next to it. Those colors just weren't working. And so by adjusting that from just that muddy teal turquoise color into the gray violet and then a few of the the little bit of the teal on top of that. Now I'm starting to create the glow that I wanted coming through those, the roses from the center. Now, none of the roses that you've seen me paint so far are finished. I'm going to continuously come back and work on them more, but I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next ones. Once I get a bit done on this, I'll keep going back to the previous ones and just balance everything out. Right now, I, my main goal is to block in my general petal shape. I don't want to just be putting random lines everywhere. I want this to be more controlled than that to where you can actually see what petals are what, but I'm just blocking those in now. 
You can see I'm using more of that gray violet here. And whenever you're trying to make a grayish tone, start by mixing your gray. You're usually going to use your black and your white. I normally go with Mars black, but in this case I was using ivory black to make it a little bit more translucent. Ivory black is going to be your translucent black, whereas the Mars black is going to be more opaque. But I mix the black and the white, and then I slowly pull in a tiny bit of color. If you start with a violet color and then mix gray into that, you're going to have a hard time ever getting that pale enough or that more neutral gray color. Start with gray and add a little bit of the violet color, or if you're going for a grayish green look, a little bit of the green. Add a little bit of that other color slowly, but don't start with that color, or like I said, it's very hard to pull it back to gray. So I'm pulling that grayish violet all over the place in these. These two flowers that are kind of in the back, I'm going to have to make them a lot darker. They are way too bright right there. So I'll use a lot, a lot of the turquoise color over those. They really need to be pushed back. And one of the things on this one that I like so much is having that high contrast between the areas of the shadow, that darker turquoise, and then the glowing orange on the other side. That I definitely was not getting the results I wanted until I introduced that grayish violet. That grayish violet really made that orange look like it's glowing. And you don't look at it and go, oh, there's a lot of grayish violet in there. You hardly see it. It's very subtle. But that's the transition. It, it's there first, and then the turquoise teal color is on top of it. That transition is allowing that teal and turquoise color to work up against the orange. When I was trying to do the teal and turquoise up against the orange by itself, it just was coming out really muddy, and I wasn't getting the glow that I wanted. And I didn't cover all of that violet gray. I just covered some of it. Some of it's still peeking through. And I've got to make sure that, again, that teal has to be pulled in there to make sense for this to work with the background. Otherwise, it just looks like I took a sticker of roses and stuck it on that round canvas. Now, the white highlights that I'm using, when I actually use titanium white, my brightest white, I want to go sparingly on that. I really want to hit just the brightest, brightest portions. Notice most of the areas that I will put the trans, or I'm sorry, the titanium white, I will glaze another color over it. In this, this case on the roses, I've glazed an aqua color over that. I don't want to leave bright white all the way around the rose because it kills the effect of having that strong light source on one side. I want to keep the brightest, brightest whites just for the areas where the, the light is really hitting it. Now for this rose, we're going to move through very quickly. I have this on the live stream so you can see this in real time. I'll have a card pop up so you can check that out. But I'm doing the same thing where I'm using using that gray violet and my oranges, just building up my base, coming through with my highlights. Once I get these highlights on there, I will start glazing some of the darker colors. Some of the peaches and oranges, teals, turquoise, all of those colors get glazed over this depending on how bright or dark I need any given area to be. I'm also using a lot of raw umber on portions of this, especially that dark green kind of center where I darkened that up a lot. I wanted to create a bit of a muddy look there. So the raw umber worked really well, blended that in a little bit with the teal and turquoise and that definitely gave me the muddy look that I needed for that center. Then I'm coming back around, adding my highlights. Now onto this guy. We're going to slow this down a little bit. I am using my magenta and brown color, that raw umber. Mix that together for this dark portion. And I'm just sketching in where the darkest portions of my flower are. When I look at the flower, I'm looking at it in terms of abstract shapes, not as a rose as a whole. When you look at it as a whole, you end up just kind of making lines all over the place. You really lose your actual petal shape. Here I want to make sure that even though it's a looser style, you should still be able to see where the, the petals lay. So I want to make sure that I'm controlled in that. And what I'm doing there is just basically focusing on the shadows, but again, looking at them in terms of abstract shapes as I copy my reference photo. Same thing on this one, blocking in the darker sections defining some of those petals, and then I will come back through and start adding some of the highlights on top of this. There is a midi medium tone. That is the unbleached titanium white. I'm just hitting those edges where I want those to be a bit brighter. I'm not just jumping straight into my titanium white because I don't want this to be my brightest portion. I want this to be a bit more of the mid-range. Coming back through now with some of that violet gray that we used on all of the other portions, and then I can use that aqua color over it. And again, when I come back on top with the aqua teal, turquoise, whatever you want to call it, I'm not covering all of the violet gray. I need some of that to show through, and especially on this area, I need a lot of these dark areas in this. These are the darkest roses. 
and creating or that contrast where I've got these definite dark areas, that's going to make my light areas glow that much more. Now here, I did pull a lot of the brighter colors on the bottom side of this rose. They're not going to stay that bright, but they're better defining my petals. And then I'm going to glaze my blues or the turquoisey color over that. I won't leave them quite this bright. Again, because I'm working with a more painterly style here, I'm not depending on detail to make this look realistic. I'm really, really strongly depending on my color and my values. And normally, I'm always telling you guys color is not that important. When you paint this style, it's a lot more important because it is such an important factor in making things look realistic. You're not depending on those clean lines and edges and tiny, tiny details to make it look realistic. You're depending on your colors and your lights, your values. I'm going to come back through with this round brush and just define the edges a little bit. I don't want to go with too much detail because, again, I do want this to be pretty loose, but just a little bit of lining here and there. And I will still need to glaze over the shadows here on the bottom side of some of those roses, strengthen up the darks. If your darks aren't dark enough, it doesn't matter if your light colors are the perfect color, they will never appear light enough and that's only because the darks are not dark enough. So you really want to make sure that you're paying attention to your values no matter what subject you're painting or drawing. Now, just as a reminder with this, if you are painting over the pouring medium like I am here, don't use water to thin your paints. I normally love water with acrylics. That's how I paint, but it won't allow the paint to bind. You need that the glazing medium so that it will bond the paint to that pouring medium. Very, very important. The other thing is make sure that you let that background dry for at least three days before you paint anything over the top of it. Here's that glaze I talked about over the highlights. So you can see now that really pushes those back. So the detail that I put with the titanium white, it still shows up, but it's much, much more subtle. It's pushed way back, so it's now within the shadow. Just a few little details here and there. Now I will come back through and add more details to the roses next week, but not a lot. They're mostly done. I won't finish everything though until I get the goldfish and the bubbles for next week's painting. This one is a work in progress. But once those are in, I can come back through and see which portions of the roses still show behind the goldfish and the bubbles. I don't want to waste too much time knowing I'm going to paint things over it. So once that's done, then I will do a few minor little adjustments on those roses and that'll be done. So make sure to check back next week for part two of this painting. Thanks for watching. Again, if you are supporters over on Patreon, the longer version of this tutorial, complete with voiceover and some real-time clips is available for you now, so make sure to head over and check that out. If you're new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, art Q&A videos every Thursday, and artist vlogs each weekend. And now I'm doing the live streaming, usually on Wednesdays. So if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of that. And you can follow me on any of my social media sites. Links are below in the video description. I'm really excited. I have been looking forward to this for two weeks. This is gonna tell you what a nerd I am. I found that there's an actual bird store. Like they carry nothing but bird toys and birds and all these bird things over in Carrollton, which is not too far from me. So I am headed over when I'm done with this to go buy stuff for the baby chicken. My excitement over this is kind of ridiculous. In my head, I know going and buying bird toys and I'm hoping to find a bird stand, not that exciting, but it doesn't matter. I'm still super excited about it. Operation New Chicken Stand was a success. He got a new stand, some new toys, and a pine cone covered in random bird tasty treats.